Of all the gaming phones out there, it's arguably the ROG phone that has brought the most interest to the category. And so it's no surprise to see ASUS milking it for all it's worth. Earlier in 2021, ASUS launched its ROG Phone 5 series, which included three models. And now it's back with an S version of that family in form of the 5S and the 5S Pro. So what's the deal exactly? I'm Cam Bunsen from PocketLint, and this is our review. And while you're here, if you could hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell, that would be amazing. If the ROG Phone 5S looks familiar, it's because it's practically identical to the ROG Phone 5 that came before it. The spec sheet states the 5S is ever so slightly thinner, but if you put them side by side or hold them, you're never going to perceive that difference. Unlike when we reviewed the ROG Phone 5 though, we were sent the regular model of the 5S, not the Pro model. That means instead of having a small AMOLED touchscreen on the back to display cute animations, it has an RGB light panel in the shape of the ROG logo. That's joined by various other little details like red accents and triangular sections with dots and stripes, just to stop the back from looking like a featureless glossy grey surface. It's a big foam, that's without doubt, and being built from aluminium and glass means it's not the lightest device in the world either. However, as we'll get to a little later, there's real benefit to this size. It's enabled ASUS to put in a couple of proper stereo speakers, a big battery, headphone port and screen with no notch or punch hole cutout. The kind of things popular big name smartphones ditch in favour of being as compact and thin as they can be. What that means is the screen has some thicker bezel on the top and the bottom with the front facing camera hidden in the top one and both ensuring there's somewhere to grip onto when playing games horizontally. With that plus the fact the screen surface is completely flat means you don't have to deal with any accidental touches and makes typing messages easy and quick. The one thing that works against this size is the glossy finish of the glass rear. It makes it quite a hefty, slippery fish, and almost necessitates using the included plastic textured grip case. The phone will happily slide off of any soft furnishing without any provocation. As for buttons and ports, it's got plenty. There are two USB-C ports, one on the bottom edge and the other covered over by a rubber seal on the left. And that's next to a connector for attaching accessories like the optional external cooling fan. Of course, you get the usual volume and power buttons. So there's a lot here to make it practical. Now, there's no doubt in my mind that the ROG Phone 5S is one of the top phones out there for media consumption. It has everything you need for a great experience, regardless of whether you're watching movies or playing games. And it starts with the huge 6.78 inch AMOLED display. Apart from missing out on Quad HD resolution, the spec sheet reads like a dream, with peak brightnesses up to 1200 nits and a typical brightness of 800 nits, plus refresh rates up to 144 Hz. It's among the smoothest and brightest screens on the market. Load up Disney Plus or Prime Video or YouTube to catch the latest titles, and the results are really impressive. There's good detail, great dynamic range, and a wide color support, giving everything we watched a vibrant, attractive appearance. But in our experience, it didn't oversaturate or give a hyper real appearance to colors either. It's just a really great display. And you can customize it too with lots of different options, including changing the color temperature or making the colors a bit less vivid. But it's not in visual performance that sets this phone apart. After all, most proper flagship phones have a great screen on them. It's in audio performance that the ROG phone's media performance is elevated above most others. A big part of that is the loudspeaker makeup. The phone features a stereo front-facing speaker system with one speaker at the top and one at the bottom. That's one of the big upsides of ASUS swerving the trend of skinny bezels. Each speaker has its own dedicated amp and the result is easily one of the best phone speaker systems on the market. Music from games and videos is loud but more importantly features a good mix of frequencies and great stereo separation. That ensures it's not tinny and lifeless, but celebrates more of the mids and the bass notes that so many other smartphones miss. It also immerses you in the sound, especially when holding the phone in landscape. You get that true left and right channel effect. It's not too boomy and rattly either. All round, great job from the ROG phone team. And that's not even the whole story. Yes, there's a three and a half millimeter port for using your favorite high-end wired headphones, but as important is support for two of Qualcomm's highest resolution wireless audio technologies, aptX Adaptive and aptX HD. With the right pair of wireless headphones, you'll get lag-free high fidelity audio. 
Now moving on to briefly mention software, and it's not really any different to the ROG Phone 5 that came before it. Everything about the custom Android launcher on the ROG Phone screams gamer. It starts with a custom launcher with game character inspired graphics and animated wallpapers, plus themes which include all manner of different game style alert tones and icon packs, with lots more to download that aren't pre-installed. You can, thankfully, switch it to a more standard theme similar to what you'd find on a Zenfone range if you want to. Armory Crate, ROG's dedicated game-focused app, lets you adjust all manner of gaming abilities, whether it's changing the LED pattern's animation and breathing pattern, or tweaking performance settings. What's more, it quite usefully also lists games that support 144 and 120Hz refresh rates that you can then download. This software customization is joined by a couple of physical attributes as well. For instance, the pressure or touch sensitive panels on the phone's edge can be mapped to control functions within games. This can give you an advantage in that it removes your fingers from the screen, giving you a clearer aim at that enemy you're trying to obliterate with precision. Now moving on to performance, and there is a famous scene in the Spinal Tap movie where the lead guitarist talks about how his amp turns all the way up to 11, and hence is better than turning up to 10. The Snapdragon 888 Plus has that exact energy. It's not the first time Qualcomm has launched a Plus version of its existing flagship processor, and it probably won't be the last. Now, if you were to sit and use the ROG Phone 5 for a couple of hours and then switch to use the 5S to play all the exact same games and content, there's a strong possibility you wouldn't see the real-life improvements. Now, sure, if you run a benchmark, you'll see higher scores from the 888 Plus. In fact, it will probably give you the highest scores of any Android phone at the time I made this video. If that matters to you and you're in the market for the fastest, most powerful phone around, then you can't really go wrong. But equally, if you can find the previous generation cheaper, there's not a lot of sense in paying the extra. Moving away from comparisons against the older model, there's no denying the speed available to you in the ROG Phone 5S. Every game it loads, it does so quickly. Once you're in the midst of the action, it's really quick and responsive too. It doesn't matter if you're chilling with some light-hearted lemmings, racing in Mario Kart Tour, or putting all that raw power to use in games like Call of Duty Mobile or PUBG it'll eat them all up for breakfast. Now, one thing that we will say is that, unsurprisingly, the phone can get a tiny bit warm during long sessions. However, that's not an understatement. It doesn't get uncomfortably hot and doesn't ever feel like it's overheating. It's just warm. Now, when you see a specification on a spec sheet like a big 5,000 mAh battery, you might assume this phone could last two days. But in the case of the ROG Phone 5S, you can't. After all, when you're driving so much power, refreshing the screen 120 times a second or more, and upping the CPU output while gaming, that uses a lot of battery juice. It's still got a good battery, and with light to moderate use, we'd often get to bedtime with around 30 or 35% left over. So it's actually fine and should comfortably get most people through a full workday without too much effort. However, on days where we spent considerable time playing our favorite games, we did manage to get it into the dangerous sub 10% level. Thankfully, though, it charges quickly and supports up to 65 watt wired speeds, so it won't leave you waiting when you plug it in. Moving on to cameras, and while they're definitely not the star of the show here, they're good enough. They're good enough that they won't detract from the experience too much, or at least if you stick with the primary lens for most of your photography, it won't. The main 64 megapixel sensor is joined by a 13 megapixel ultra wide just like the ROG Phone 5, and delivers the same kind of results. That's to say, shooting in daylight with the main camera will give you detailed photos with attractive natural colors and decent depth of field. In lower light situations, even when outdoors during the day, we did notice the picture started to get a little bit noisier. But it wasn't horrendous, at least not with the main camera, which, with its f-stop 1.8 aperture, is better at letting in light than the ultrawide. In fact, the ultrawide is a poorer camera in many aspects and its usefulness is pretty much limited to taking wide landscapes at a distance. Try shooting anything relatively close and it'll fail to focus on anything. And its color and light processing isn't as good as the main sensor either. Images are comparatively flatter, more washed out and noisier in low light conditions. So as my main overall sort of takeaway, the ROG Phone 5S might be marketed as a gaming phone and it is a wonderful one, but it is in general, a very good phone. It's a great all-round device, just like the ROG Phone 5 was before it. It's good for consuming media and doing pretty much everything else. It even has one decent camera. 
Let me know what you think of this phone in the comments, or you can reach out to me if you have any questions. I'm also on Twitter, I'm at Cam Bunton, so get me on there if you prefer. If you did like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, tap subscribe and the notification bell, and then you don't miss any more of our videos. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now. Thank you.